Hi, this screencast will be on setting up a simple navigation setup. And this will be similar to what was in the assignment for 6.2 in Module 6. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I have ActionScript 3.0. I'm at the intro screen here, and I'm going to set up the, the size. So the first thing I want to do is create some layers in the Layers panel. We have one already. I'm going to add maybe five layers. And the very top layer will be Action Script. And this is where I'll put all my actions, which in this case will mostly be Stop. Second layer will be Graphics. And I'm going to fast forward here a little bit. So one thing I'm going to do to check, just to make sure, is make sure advanced layers are not on. Because that always causes a problem with the action script communicating to the actual project. So I go to Modify, to Document, and Use Advanced Layers is checked. And I don't want that checked. Turn off advanced layers. What advanced layers does is uh, creates within the actual layer itself a kind of like a parent-child relationship. So what happens is you are communicating not only with one layer, but more like communicating with two layers. And it creates problems. So I'm back to just one layer here. So the first thing I'm going to do is create buttons. So I'm just going to go to my, I'm going to create one button. I'm going to go to my oval tool, pull an oval. I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go to Modify, Convert to Symbol. When I get Convert to Symbol, I'll give it a name. And it'll just be Button. And I want that not to be a graphic, not to be a movie clip but a button. OK, so now I have my button. And if I double click the button, I'm going to go from scene one, the main scene, I'm going to go to the button editing mode. I'm going right into the button. So now you see reflected is that I'm in the button editing mode. And you also see that up there, scene one. So you could think of what I, where I am right now as being nested. So what I want to do is populate all these frames. So I'm just going to go here, Insert Keyframe. What I want to do is create a hit state. So that what the hit state is going to be is when your mouse goes over this button area, you want it to interact. And that's what this hit state does. So I'm just going to take a rectangle. You won't see this. It could be any color you want. You won't see this when you get into Scene 1. So I go to Scene 1. The hit state is not visible. So we've created a button. It's in the library. It's called Button. I can delete this for now because I'm going to use multiple instances of this button on the stage. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Button Editing mode again, where I just was, this time by clicking the button in the library. And I'm going to add another layer. And on this layer, what I'll do is I'll put text. So I'll write the word next using Helvetica. And it's static text, which I want. And Helvetica, the size looks good. I'm going to change the color to white or to black. So I have to select the actual word. V for the selection tool and move that to my button. Now I'm going back to scene one. So I come down to my layers I called buttons and I go to the library and I, as I said earlier, I can, I can take multiple instances of this button and put it on the stage. One important thing here is I have this selected on the stage, and I go to Properties. 
and you see it has no instance name, it's not a good idea to give it the exact same name that it has in the library, which is B-U-T-T-O-N. So I will call this button first. So I select it, make sure. OK, all that's working. In the very first layer, I'm going to put in the first frame, there's already a frame there, I'm going to put a stop. So to do this, what I do is I go to Window, Actions, and I want to use Code Snippets. And this is this icon right here. So if you look at the keyframe right now, you see just a dot. So I go to Action Script, and just about all the Action Script you'll be needing will be found in this timeline navigation. So stop at this frame. And as soon as I click that, you get this. Now the only thing that's important here is, is what's colored, uh, what's dark. This is just a comment telling what's happening. Stop at this frame. I can delete that if I want to. So now when I go down to my frame, I see, now when I go down to my frame, I see not only is there a dot, but there's actually a little A. And what that means is there's action script there. So I don't have any other layers yet. So for this, I'm going to go to any frame out here, say 65, and I'm going to do Insert Keyframe. And as you can see in Layer 1, Actions Layer, when I select that keyframe, I see Stop. So all my stops are going to go up in this layer. Any other actions I put, like Go To and Play, Go To and Stop, as you see right here, will be attached right to the actual instance or button itself. Right now I have a stop, and it's going to stop on frame 1. So I want to take this button and select it. I want to click Go to Frame and Play. Automatically, the default number will be 5. But what you'll do is you'll change that number to whatever frame you want to go. In this case, it's going to be frame 2. I just want to get past, not 22, just frame 2. I, so in frame 1, I have a stop. Now I'm going to go to the next button. And it's named button BTNFIRST. And I'm going to have it go to frame 2. And what it'll do is go to frame 2 and play right through to 65 and come back to stop. So I'm going to get code snippets here, which is right here in the Actions panel. The Actions panel can be accessed by going to Window Actions. So in order to see that there's actual movement in this timeline, I have, as you can see, if I look at the button and see where it comes up in the layers, that it goes all the way across. So I could insert a blank keyframe somewhere where I wanted it to not appear. But right now, the button appears all the way across the timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the timeline, and I'm going to add a couple of graphics. Insert keyframe. Insert keyframe. And I'll do one more. Insert keyframe. So now I'm going to test the movie, and you'll be able to see that there's actual movement. Because as I said earlier, when I, it's going to stop. And then when I click the button, it's going to go to frame 2, and it's just going to play. And there's no stop at the end, so it's going to go right back and loop to the original frame 1 where it'll stop again. So control, test movie, or just test, rather. So here we are, frame 1. And it goes right back to frame 1. If I didn't put those graphics in, all you'd see is the next button, because I, I didn't delete it. So what I could have done for that is I could have went into my button layer, select the button, and use the V for a shortcut, select the button, and see which layer is on. I could put in a insert a blank keyframe. So now the button's going to disappear, but it shows up at the very last keyframe. So what you would do is take the last keyframe and clear keyframe. 
Next, I'm going to add a second button, and the second button will appear right after the first button disappears. So I go to my library, I get next button, and I probably is going to be some overlapping here. One thing about Animate is the layer system is fairly similar to Photoshop, if you're familiar with that. Layers closest to the top will actually be closest to the top. The top layer is top, so it's similar to Photoshop in that manner. So here's my first, my second button, rather. And what I'm going to do is go, it has no instance name, so I'm going to give it, uh, I'll say, btn second. And I'm going to go to the actions layer, and I'm going to put a stop in. So I'm back at code snippets, which you get to by going to the actions panel. Again, which is window, actions, and then selecting code snippets right here. So I want it to stop right on layer, I believe that's 7. Whoop, I, I didn't get the little A, so I got to double click it again. There we are. And again, that's reflected in the action script. And you see it right up here, frame 7. There's a stop. Now I go to my button and I add action script to the actual button. And I have it named, if I look in the properties panel, it's BTN second. That's what's communicating with the action script. So we have our stop on frame 7. And now we're going to go, we have the button selected. We're going to go to Code Snippets and go to Frame 8. So here we are again. Default is 5. You're always going to see 5. So I'm just going to change that to 8. So now Test. We should click the first button and go to the second and stop. And then when we click the second, it has a stop, as you can see, in the actions timeline. So the actions timeline should be at the very top. It's kind of a priority if you want to keep things organized. So we have a stop in the frame 7. And now we're going to put, and we've put some action script on the new button. And it's going to go to frame 8 and play which you can see here, actions. There's my stop. So I'm going to test it. So now here's my stop on frame 7. Now the action script says go to frame 8 and play. So it's going to go right through, right back to no stop here. So go right back to frame 1. So I'll do one more button. 